U.S. President Donald Trump has once again lashed out at India on trade issues. Trump tweeted saying India has had a long field day putting tariffs on American products. Trump in the past has referred to India as tariff king and publicly raised the issue of high tariffs on many U.S. products. The development comes days ahead of the visit of U.S. trade officials team to talk on various issues including trade with India. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has warned Iran of military action as tensions between Washington and Tehran escalates. And Netanyahu has said that Israeli jets can reach anywhere in the Middle East, including Iran, and especially Syria. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has reaffirmed his staunch support with Israel. He has said in a quote here, We will continue to work with our Israeli partner to combat the mistreatment of all religious communities, unquote. Meanwhile, Iranian Foreign Minister Javed Zarif has accused the Washington of killing the 2015 nuclear deal with Tehran. The U.S. has placed sanctions on three senior Hezbollah officials for undermining U.S. efforts against Iran and Hezbollah. Officials are accused of undermining Lebanese institutions and helping Hezbollah financiers escape U.S. sanctions. The statement also made a categorical statement that the recent activities demonstrate that there is no difference between the political and military wing of Hezbollah. A U.S. court has ruled that the president cannot block people on Twitter. The court said that the blocking an individual from viewing the president's tweet is tantamount to infringing on his or her rights. The judges said that the constitution does not allow Trump to exclude persons from an open dialogue simply because he disagrees with their views. This comes after the president and his staff were sued by a number of social media users who were blocked by Trump. These netizens argued that Trump's Twitter handle is a public forum and no one can be banned from it. U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has called for Alexander Acosta's resignation. Acosta is Trump's Labor Secretary, who has been accused of having links with Jeffrey Epstein, the wealthy U.S. financer who has been convicted of sex trafficking. Pelosi has said in a quote here, as U.S. Attorney, he has engaged in, an, in agreements with Jeffrey Epstein and prevented young victims from seeking justice, unquote. She also made a startling remark on Trump that the president was aware of the deal when he appointed Acosta to his cabinet. However, Trump has backed Labour Chief Acosta and said he will look into the matter. Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson, the two men fighting it out to become UK's next Prime Minister, participated on a televised debate on who can negotiate a better Brexit. The gloves were truly off as it fired some serious salvos and took pot shots at each other. Hunt said that he would be willing to delay Brexit as long as economists and the general public think it's a good deal. At this point, Johnson called him a defeatist. Bowing to the public pressure, Hong Kong's chief executive Carrie Lam has said that the controversial extradition bill has, is dead. She reiterated that there is no plan to restart the legislation. Lam also described the work to amend the bill as a top failure, but protesters have called it sheer wordplay. They have suggested that they will continue with the demonstrations unless the draconian bill is completely withdrawn. Lam also took full responsibility of the massive protest that broke out in the city. Prosecutors on Tuesday searched and seized items from one of the homes of former Peruvian President Olanta Humala. This was in connection with Latin America's biggest corruption scandal. Humala and his wife Nadine Heredia have been charged of receiving over $3 million from Brazilian construction joint for his presidential campaign. The couple has been under investigation for several years now since the corruption scandal broke out. Both were ordered behind the bars in 2017 as a preventive measure, but released a year later.
Venezuelan President uh, Nicolas Maduro said he was optimistic after dialogue between his government and the opposition resumed in Barbados. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro met with Enrique Iglesias, the European Union Special Advisor for Venezuela. Barbados talks will be the third round since the Oslo talks in May, although Guaido has originally said that last Tuesday there was no plans to reopen talks with Maduro's murderous dictatorship following the death of an officer in custody over an alleged coup plot. The UN human rights expert who conducted an independent probe into the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi has urged the US to act on her findings. Agnes Kalamar in her probe had concluded that Khashoggi's death at the Saudi embassy in Istanbul was an extrajudicial killing by Saudi Arabia. Kalamar along with Khashoggi's fiancé fiance, has called for the Western countries to act upon the findings of the probe at an event in London. The asylum seekers from Mexico are being asked to remain in the country by the U.S. government. Many of the Mexican migrants who crossed over to the U.S. have been placed in detention camps or sent back to Mexico. Ten migrants who crossed over the U.S. on Monday still await an update on their asylum request. The U.S. program, known as the Migrant Protection Protocols, acts as a deterrent for applicants who previously were real, in fact released into the U.S. with notices to appear in court. Italy's hardline interior minister Matteo Salvini closed a migrant centre in Sicily on Tuesday. Salvini said that the closure would free up hundreds of thousands of euros a day in public money as well as law enforcement. The centre, which at one point held as many as 4,000 migrants, was built by Salvini as the largest in Europe. The centre has been slated to close for years with prosecutors uncovering illegal activities inside including an alleged Nigerian drug trafficking ring. It was also part of a huge bribery and kickback scandal involving migrant housing. Forty-seven migrants rescued from a boat in the Mediterranean were taken to a port in southern Sicily's Pozzalo yesterday. Migrants were rescued by Italian Coast Guard and transferred into a police patrol vessel which brought them to port. According to the port doctor, the migrants were part of a group of 53 people with six migrants taken to Lampedusa after they required immediate medical care. Former Argentina President Fernando de la Rua was laid to rest on Tuesday. He died at the age of 81 of cardiac arrest and other complications. De la Rua attracted voters with his image of an honest statesman, but later the country as it plunged into its worst economic crisis. The casket was placed inside the Argentine Congress building. Family members, friends and supporters were present to pay their last respects to the leader. Quiero saludar a la familia de la Rúa en este día tan doloroso para ellos. A Colombian rebel has turned lawmaker into, in fact, is accused by the U.S. of conspiring to traffic cocaine, did not appear at his hearing. Jesus Santrich uh, disappeared earlier this month after a long legal and political saga stemming from an indictment by a U.S. grand jury. The jury accused him of trying to export cocaine worth $320 million. His lawyer has claimed that Santrich's absence at the court is most likely due to security issues. Mexico's France, uh, in fact, the Minister of Finance, Carlos Urza, has resigned on Tuesday in a letter that shocked markets. He cited extremism in economic policy for his resignation. In the unusually strong worded resignation note, not his Twitter account, 
Urzua said that the government was forming economic policy without sufficient foundation. He also alleged the conflict of interest in the appointment of some ministry officials imposed on him by influential members of the government. However, he did not give any further details. Acting swiftly, President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador quickly named a well-regarded deputy minister as a replacement. A news anchor at a private television channel, Murid Abbas, was shot dead in Karachi over what is being described as a personal dispute. Abbas owed money to an individual who later called him to a location where he was shot. A shorter, in fact, the, the shooter has allegedly committed suicide after the incident. Boeing's deliveries have fallen about 37% in the first half of 2019. The American plane maker could only deliver 293 aircraft so far in this year. These numbers were put out by Boeing itself. The company admitted that the production was hurt by the grounding of its best-selling jet, the 737 MAX. The fleet, remember, was grounded in March this year after 346 people were killed. In two fatal crashes, Boeing's loss was Airbus's gain. The European rival has handed over 389 planes in the first half of 2019. Airbus's deliveries are up by 28%. France makes an effort to regulate environmental damage. The transport minister has said that the France will soon introduce an eco-tax on all airlines flying out of the country. The French government plans to impose a tax of up to 18 euros each on all outgoing flight tickets. However, no tax will be charged on transit flights. The measure aims to fund more uh, ecological transportation projects within the European Union. Imposed eco-tax is expected to raise an estimate of 180 million euros by the year 2020. Hawaii has become the 26th state in the United States to decriminalize the possession of small amounts of marijuana. As per the law, there will be no jail for possession of up to 3 grams of marijuana. However, it will continue to attract a fine of $130. This is the smallest limit set by any U.S. state and will come into effect from January next year. Indonesia on Tuesday announced its decision of sending dozens of waste containers back to Western nations. 49 containers will be returned to Australia, the US, France, Germany and Hong Kong. This was after inspections showed their contents violated Indonesian laws of the import of hazardous and toxic waste. These containers were found contaminated with used diapers, plastics and other materials. The incident was, has been added to growing backlash in Southeast Asia being a dumping ground for the developed world's rubbish. Massive fire broke out in the Russian province of Siberia. The fire has spanned across a territory of 600,000 hectares. Few regions of Siberia have been worst affected, with 36 fires being dealt with the Irkutsk region alone. Authorities in Siberia have been working to tackle forest fires. Hundreds of firefighters and two planes have been deployed as part of efforts to put out the fires. Forty-six people have been sent to the hospital after a carbon monoxide leak in a motel in Winnipeg. Fifteen of those admitted are being said to be in critical condition. Staff and guests were evacuated earlier after a fire broke out. Thirty fire and paramedic units were rushed to the scene and the gas connection to the motel was immediately cut off. Carbon monoxide, of course, is lethal to the human body if inhaled in large proportions. A video has emerged of a car jacking suspect plowing through the streets of Greenville, South Carolina and crashing into the barricades on the road. A suspect has been identified as a 29-year-old woman named Hilmary Moreno. As per the police, Moreno stole the vehicle after throwing a live black non-poisonous snake at the owner. 
She has been charged with carjacking, malicious damage to property and five traffic violations.